Thank you, everybody. Sheriff Chris Swanson with my colleague, Prosecutor David Layton here at the prosecutor's office. We come to you because of some tragic news. Um, a scene that spreads from Burton City to Vienna Township to Genesee Township. It started early this morning, and the family involved is a high-profile family that's beloved by this community, and uh, we're going to uh, reveal that here shortly. But around uh, 2.50 this morning, a call goes out to Burton City for a domestic in progress, and a family member came over to the house on the 3500 block of Columbine and engaged into a verbal confrontation, and there was a gun presented. The subject, a 27-year-old family member, took off on foot, and Burton City responded. That individual made contact with his birth mother, and um, sometime between that and uh, shortly after 5 o'clock in the morning today, uh, that mother picked him up and was taking him back to uh, his dad's place, which is a 57-year-old man in Vienna Township on the 9,000 block of Neff Road. During that transition, while she was driving, uh, the subject jumped out of the moving vehicle. The, uh, the birth mom and uh, the ex-wife of the 57-year-old father, um, they connected and said that we need to go find him. Now, in that, that house in Vienna Township, there was another family member sleeping in the basement who lives there and um, stated that, that when the dad left to go find his son with the mother, uh, shortly thereafter, they came back, and it was just the dad. A confrontation was heard by the, the family member, the other son in the basement, and it was uh, a yelling match, which sometimes is not uncommon. And there was a comment made about, give me your wallet and your keys, made by the uh, suspect, the 27-year-old. And I will tell you that that wallet was found on that suspect's person later on during this, this tale of violence. In that verbal confrontation, uh, the son downstairs heard one shot, and that shot took the life of Timothy Kildee, the brother of Congressman Dan Kildee. The family member that we uh, believe is the suspect in this incident is in custody, but is at the hospital because after that shooting happened, one shot is what we believe in our investigation shows. The vehicle of the victim was taken and stolen from the driveway. And about eight minutes after that shooting and the 911 call that goes out, a uh, high impact personal injury accident happened in Genesee Township at Dorton Stanley. The vehicle that was taken from the scene by the suspect, we believe, uh, was at a high rate of speed, and two individuals in another pickup truck were hit. Uh, they are doing well, uh, no serious injuries, but the suspect has serious injuries. It was transported to Hurley Hospital, where he is in custody, but not charged yet. Prosecutor Layton will talk about that. And, uh, and there's a sheriff's guard on him until we proceed in this process. I will tell you that uh, our Detective Bureau, and I want to thank Genesee Township, Burton City, Montmore City, Clow City for their assistance. While we had three things happening at the same time, the Sheriff's Office is the lead on all three scenes. And we do not believe at this point that there are any other suspects involved in the murder of Timothy Kildee. I have been in contact with Congressman Kildee, who was in Washington uh, during uh, this incident, and he is now en route back. Uh, via commercial airline, and he and his family, who've all been notified, have asked that the uh, public and the media respect their privacy. Uh, he's got an elder mother, and uh, they have been through a lot. Um, clearly, this is tragic, and it involves other family members, but we're going to continue bringing not only answers to questions, but also comfort to the family. Prosecutor Layton. Okay, thanks, Sheriff. Um, Understanding everybody that this is an ongoing investigation, but if we were to apply the law to the facts as we know them presently, we're probably looking at a count of open murder. 
uh, a count of carjacking, uh, a charge of armed robbery, a charge of using a firearm during the commission of a felony, uh, a charge of carrying a concealed weapon, and likely a motor vehicle infraction for the crash. We don't know precisely what that might be. We're awaiting the toxicology report uh, from the suspect, and that could take some time. But and, and, and let me let me reiterate that things could change as this investigation continues, but based upon what we know to this point in time, those are uh, likely charges that my office is looking at with respect to the suspect. So we'll do another follow-up as, uh, as charges are, are formally um, announced through the prosecutor. We want to be thankful to uh, your staff, Karen Hansen, and everybody here to help with search warrants. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that we're going to be uh, mourning the loss of Timothy Kildee, the brother of Dan Kildee, and uh, processing the family member who has not yet formally been charged. But uh, he'll be identified when that happens. Questions? Yes, ma'am. So the initial confrontation wasn't at Timothy's house, right? Do we know what initially set things off? So the question is, where was the initial contact? And, and there were three scenes, independent of each other, except for the car being used in the crash. The domestic dispute that happened in Burton did not have anything to do with the deceased Timothy Kildee. But the suspect was there at another family member's house. He showed up. There was a confrontation there. A gun was presented. And then from there, he left. Yes? Do we, do we, you kind of mentioned a, a, a lot of different things, but do we know of, of one simple motive behind any of these incidents? Uh, the question about motive, and uh, again, the, uh, the investigation shows a pattern, uh, but we have done significant interviews with a number of family members already. Uh, you know, there is, a, there is a potential of some substance abuse, as the prosecutor said, we won't know until toxicologies, uh, but the behavior of the suspect lends anyone to believe that there was some type of breakdown and or uh, other entanglements that, you know, caused him to, uh, to be so violent. But, the key to this case from all three scenes is absolute violent behavior. Yes? Do we know the exact address on Neff Road? Right. It's the 9,000 block of Neff Road. That's part of the privacy thing. I, I'm, I was asked to, to really emphasize that, um, but I appreciate your understanding. Yes? You mentioned that uh, the people who were in the truck that uh, the 27 year old collided with weren't seriously hurt. Uh, what's the status of their injuries? Uh, have they been fully released from, from care? Yes, they have minor injuries and uh, it was because of the impact of the, uh, what I would call the non at fault driver. Well, all in the front of the, uh, of the vehicle, uh, but the stolen vehicle from the victim. We have pictures that uh, we are posting on our social media that our media sergeant will share with all the media. And you'll see the, 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 the impact and the amount of damage to the vehicle. I can say that, that, that looking at that picture, Sheriff shared it with me as part of the review. Uh, had, the, had the crash occurred closer to the door of the vehicle, we'd be talking about other charges right now. But because the crash was to the front of the vehicle, it allowed these folks to basically walk away from, That's true. from the scene. Very, very like lucky. Head -on collision instead of a it was a T-bone. No, it was a, a straight oh. up, yes, oh, so yes. Okay. He blew the, uh, the signal. I would estimate the speed at the impact was uh, far exceeding the posted speed limit. Yes. Was he being pursued at that point? He was not. There was no pursuit. The question was, there's, was there a pursuit? This happened within eight minutes of the original shooting that went down. They put out an injury crash in Genesee Township. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Prosecutor Layton. Thank you, Sheriff. And more to come.